Hey guys, so there are 6 expeditions in total. I'm gonna talk about the last 3 today, Dynasty, Genesis and Lazarus. I'm just gonna walk you through each and give you some tips along the way. So first one, Dynasty. You're going up against corrupted enemies, they're weak against thrust, nature and arcane damage and they're resistant to strike and ice damage. So as you can see my hatchet was dealing I believe 40% damage as ice and my warhammer deals strike damage. So no matter what I do they will be taking less damage from me. You might also want to grab a fire absorption potion before starting this expedition since some elites and even the final boss will deal heavy fire damage. Now this is a straightforward expedition. First objective, get past the guards and find your way to the fleet. Nothing special here. A couple of enemies, you should have no problems whatsoever with these. There is no hidden chests or anything here but as soon as you walk out of here there is a dragon lorry and you should go and harvest that. Cause if you get a dragon flower that's at least 400 gold right there. You need that flower to make further progress in the main storyline. So if you get it, keep it or sell it. It's always going to sell well because it's rare and people have to get at least one. Now the objective changed, you have to clear the cave and destroy the monolith. Here you're gonna meet summoner Yao. He's not tough, he's got some AoE damage but as long as your healer does his job, nothing to be afraid of. Then destroy the monolith and get to the shrine. Here you're gonna fight in the open. There are lots of corrupted and you should just aggro 2-3 at a time, then another 2-3, until there are none left. There is a chest on the left, make sure you get what's inside, and some orichalcum veins. Then blow up the gate and keep pushing forward. Next you're going to meet Maiden Jing Fei. Just like summoner Yao, she's got some AoE but as you can see I had almost 7k health and with some help from my healer I was able to stay alive. As you climb up the stairs there is a page, so grab that for some XP. In the courtyard you're going to meet Commander Chen and his two maidens. Main strategy here, the tank should be on Commander, while the DPS take out the maidens one by one. The Commander does have some fancy moves but as long as the tank is on him, he'll go down in like a minute. If the Commander is focusing on you, just block or dodge. After you're done, go right, there is a chest there, somewhat hidden, but before looting it, you might wanna harvest this Dragon Glory first. Like I said, it's worth good cash. And then head over to the docks. You have to place a powder keg and then you have to defend it. On your way to the docks you will fight some corrupted and an elite, but you can barely call this an elite, he's got a bit more HP that's all. After placing the powder keg you'll have to kill around 25 corrupted but just like 6-7 at a time. Then the game tells you to keep pushing forward. On your way to the next pier, on the right there is another dragon glory. And just like before place the powder, defend it from around 30 enemies and then the game tells you to move to the barracks. But don't just yet, there is a hidden chest in the water. Grab what's inside and get ready to meet Isabella. Now Isabella is the first boss, she will leave you when you get her down to about 50% HP, then you'll have to find the hounds, which are the main problem. She can summon some creatures, very low HP, she will slash in a wide arc in front of her, that deals some damage, she can teleport behind the player and stab him in the back. She will also fire her pistol, this also deals heavy damage and lastly when she's at 75% HP, she will command her crew to fire the cannons. You can very easily dodge these. But make sure before you fight the hounds, make sure that your ranged DPS kills the enemies on the ship, which is on the right. Who let the dogs out? Well, turns out Isabella let the dogs out. The tank should be on one of them and the DPS should kill the other. They basically have two attacks, one can be blocked or dodged, the other one deals heavy damage and obviously cannot be blocked because it's fire, unless you have like a huge bucket of water. The next zone, try not to aggro them all at once, just like 2-3 at a time. The most notable enemy here is Summoner Guan. Do you remember Summoner Yao? They're basically identical, only difference is that this one is armored, so a bit tankier. Captain Kai Wei has the keys, so kill him and his friends, he's just a normal corrupted with more HP, nothing special. Open the gates and prepare to face the final boss. So she's basically the boss version of the maidens and in this fight there are two stages, above 60% HP and below 60% HP. So basically while she's above 60% HP she will fight just like a maiden but she deals more damage. As soon as she reaches 60% HP she will start spawning corrupted and some pedestals. Now the corrupted are just trash mobs you can easily take them out but the pedestals can actually become a problem. See if the pedestals are up and she for example conjures a dragon, each pedestal conjures a dragon as well. If she uses her dragon fire attack, each pedestal will use the same attack, so DPS should take these out as soon as they spawn. That's all for this one. So Genesis, 
You'll be fighting Angry Heart in this expedition, they're resistant to thrust and lightning damage, but they take more damage from fire and slash. Before starting this one, make sure you grab a blight tincture, you'll need it down the line. Now, your first encounter will be with some fiends next to a hive. This will not be the last time you encounter fiends and hives. Make sure you always prioritize hives, as they'll periodically spawn new fiends. A couple meters away, there's an elite archer and his buddy. Nothing to be afraid of, get rid of them and head down the stairs, where more level 65 fiends will be waiting for you. There, you will basically find yourself in this big hall, which is full of hives, fiends, archers, prowlers, and you will have to get rid of all of them to get to the end. Once you get there, you'll have to mine a sample of concentrated blight and then get back up the stairs on the bridge. And the door that was locked at the end of the bridge is now open. Taxodius is waiting for you and he's not that much tougher than the elite archer on the bridge. If you have a tank in your party, which of course you should, then it's GG. Once he's down, load the chest on the left and activate the shrine. Continue to the left and down the stairs. This is again just a standard fight and if you all have like above 500 gear score you should be fine. Once you're done with these guys, keep on pushing forward until you get to a crossroad. Then take it left. Kill Gorgiri and his minions and then the one who has the concentrated blight needs to purify it now. And what do you do with this purified blight? Well, you plant and protect it. But make sure you kill all the enemies before you do so because more will start to spawn. Now fiends, prowlers don't really pose a problem but the soldiers throw heavies which can hit for like 4-5k damage so make sure you dodge those. After you killed all 30-40 enemies, go left. There's an expedition chest and then you have to search for the purifying flame to clear the walls of concentrated blight. So take it right and down the stairs. You guessed it, more fiends are waiting for you. After you're done with them you'll have to fight Taxi. Do you remember Taxodius? Well, Taxi is just a mini version of Taxodius. There is some star metal on the left if you want to mine that. If not, go ahead and take care of the shaman and continue up the stairs. You will encounter a Genesis warrior, archer and fiend on your way to the shrine. After you activated the shrine, it's time for the first boss, the caretaker. He, like some other bosses, has two stages, above 60% HP and below 6% HP. Above 60% HP, he's going to use a couple of attacks, he can extend his arms and knock down a player, he can shoot some skull-like blight. Once you get him down to less than 60%, he's going to create an impassable barrier. If you're not in that range, you're going to get trapped outside and you'll have to fight trash mobs. But if you're in range, you're going to get trapped inside with the boss, or the boss is trapping himself in with you. I think at some point he was trying to get out or something. He will also go underground and leave blight behind him and here is where you might want to use that blight tincture. After looting the expedition chest you have to carry the purifying flame or not so while you or any other members in your group carry the flame they can't do anything else so they cannot fight. What you can do is clear the path and then somebody has to go back and grab the flame. There is a wall of concentrated blight next to where you grab it. You can burn it down but you can't do much in that room just yet. You will have to defeat every angry earth until you get to the very end of the hallway, where Odus is guarding a wall which you have to burn down. After taking care of Odus and after having burned down the wall, you will have to fight another two elites. Now there is no reason to aggro them both, just take them out one by one, nothing special about them, they just have a bit more health than your regular mob. Then on the right is the path that leads you to the last shrine and to the final boss, Sila. Same as before, while she's above 60% HP, she basically acts like a normal boss. She will spawn two balls of blight around her. Those, those could be a problem to your ranged colleagues, but if you stay next to her like I did, they are non-existent for you. Then when she drops below 60%, she will go underground and target the furthest player, I believe. And you have to watch out for this attack because it has the potential to one-shot you. She then will proceed to drop down two big boulders, and this is the main mechanic of this boss, the main gimmick. First and foremost, watch out for the boulders when they drop down. Then she will beam a player, that player has to go behind one of the boulders. Next she will stop attacking while preparing to release a huge wave of blight. You all have to get behind the two boulders. You have say 5 seconds to do so. Don't forget the chest and GG. So the last expedition and the hardest in my opinion is Lazarus. You'll be up against the, the ancient race, uh, so they're strong against fire and slash damage, weak against arcane and thrust damage. So the first fight is against Tamisis and his minions. He's quite tanky but doesn't deal that much damage. You will notice that many enemies have shields, just use CC and throw heavies. Continue onwards until you get to the first puzzle. Here you'll have to fight a couple of waves of ancients, but the main objective is to close the portals. So how do you do that? Well, look above the portals, there are some hieroglyphs. 
You and your mates have to match the ones on the ground with the ones above the portals by standing on them. You will have to do this multiple times while fighting off ancients. After closing off the portals, a new door will open and yep, you gotta fight more ancients. Nothing special, just a standard fight. Continue forward towards the shrine and loot the expedition chest on the right. Now you have to unlock the Azoth seal and clear the path. Same as before guys, no reason to fight all the ancients at once, just take them out one by one and be careful. Don't unlock the Azoth seal until you're ready because as soon as you do, more ancients will spawn. Defeat them and proceed to the next shrine, but you cannot activate it just yet. You first must make your way to Scylla, you will fight her a bit later on. For now you have to cleanse, so turn back, defeat the first group of enemies, then you meet Alcyon who is guarding the door. Don't underestimate Alcyon, he's got the brutal affix, which means he deals 25% more damage. But since he's a summoner, I think his archers also deal 25% more damage. When I did this expedition I believe my gear score was at uh, 530. And some of us needed to be revived because we were not expecting this kind of damage. Take out the trash mobs then focus down the elite. You still can't activate the shrine, not even after defeating him. So continue forward. Get into the bait chambers. You will have to fight some trash mobs and uh, an elite but just a standard fight, nothing crazy. Cleanse yourself and go back to Scylla. Now the shrine activates. So what's this boss going to do? Well the main thing here is to dodge her ultimate nova ability. You gotta dodge that, it deals tremendous damage. How many times is she going to cast it? It depends. You see, some orbs will spawn throughout the fight. A ranged character needs to interact with those, because if not, the boss will collect those and cast the ability sooner and more often. There is another tricky part though. The character who interacts with those orbs is in big trouble, because as soon as she casts that specific nova ability, all the orbs collected by that character will deal tremendous damage as well. So preferably you want the ice tomb ability for this. Other than this ability, there is nothing worth mentioning assuming you are level 60 and above 500 gear score. Don't forget the chest before teleporting, but even if you do forget to loot it, you can go back. Once you activate the next shrine, you are presented with the second and the last puzzle of this expedition. Basically the way we did this, tank solo in the first chamber, me and the healer in the second chamber and in the third one the other two DPS. You just have to survive for 2 minutes and in order to start the trial everyone needs to stand on all 3 pressure plates. As soon as the timer runs out the gates will open and you can all clear the remaining enemies. You have a small chest at the end of the hallway then go right and you'll have to fight 2 elites. One does some ice damage and the other is tanky. Again nothing worth mentioning. Proceed to unlock the door and defeat the 3 defenders. Activate the shrine and then it's basically trash mob, trash mob, trash mob until you get to Demos, which is an arcane elite. He's your normal elite, a bit more health than a regular trash mob and does a bit more damage. After you defeat him, two avengers and one rival will spawn. Defeat those and two javelineers will spawn. Defeat these two and two archers and one taskmaster will spawn. Then finally the door opens and you'll be able to activate the last checkpoint of this expedition. You will not fight the boss just yet, gotta defeat an armored arcanist first. Do you remember Alcyon? Well this one doesn't deal as much damage but he's tankier. Grab the ancient garden harp, loot the chest on the right, read the page that's also on the right and teleport to fight the final boss. This boss has 2 stages, above 15% health and below 15% health. While above 50% health, he will periodically slap the arena, obviously you don't want to be the target. Easy to dodge, he will punch and clap, dealing a lot of damage, but if you stay close to his torso, you should be fine. He will also detach his fists, they will make 2 laps around the arena, dealing heavy damage if they hit a player. Then they return to him. The main thing that you should be aware of while he's above 15% health, is that there will be two orbs spawning on each side of the arena. You need to first destroy the barrier, then take the orbs and place them in the panels which are located in the arena in front of the boss. Why? Well, at some point he will use his beam attack. Now, on the wiki it says that he will target the tank, which is simply not true. He will target everyone, healer, DPS, tank, doesn't matter. So to make him stop, run behind the panel with an active orb. That will knock him down and it's time to deal as much damage as possible because while he's down, glowing red, he takes 3 times more damage. So you brought him down to 15% health, what now? He will stop clapping, punching, slapping, he will start using his beam attack until you're all dead or until he is dead. Again on the wiki it says that he will target the tank, which again is not true, he will target everyone. Hopefully in your run he will target the tank because then it's GG. The tank should be able to take the damage while the DPS deal the remaining damage. If he targets you, well, use potions of course, the healer should be able to help you as well and stay close to your mates, this way they'll be able to revive you as soon as you're down. He's got 6.7 million HP so it'll take a while. That was all guys, 
Hope you got something useful out of this guide. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good one.